see, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with a willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with each one of you. As we celebrate this 16th uh, Sunday in ordinary time, we also welcome those who will join us tomorrow and the days after as well by YouTube. So we pray with and for them, as well as with and for one another. We hear of the work of the Spirit in the readings this evening and also the call to repentance. So let's, as we always do, begin Mass by acknowledging our, our sins, opening our hearts to the mercy of the Lord, offering forgiveness to everyone else. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God beside you, Lord, who cares for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that righteousness must be kind and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to the cry of my supplication. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. But you, O Lord, our God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field, but while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It's the smallest of all the seeds. But when it has grown, it's the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading reminds us that God's always teaching his people, instructing us. What does he want us to know? That he does care for each and every person, that though he's a God of justice, even those who defy and disbelieve him may hope for his mercy if they turn to him in, in repentance. The divine teaching continues in the three parables Jesus gives us in the gospel. Each parable describes the emergence of the kingdom of God from the seeds sown by the the works and preaching of Jesus and his church. The kingdom's growth is hidden, like the working of yeast in in bread, not very obvious. It's improbable, unexpected, as in the way the tall mustard tree grows from the smallest of seeds. And it's present in a damaged and often dangerous world. The good wheat, the children of the kingdom, grows alongside weeds, as we just heard, a metaphor used by Jesus to describe the children of the evil one. The readings also provoke questions. Why does God permit the evil to grow alongside the good? And why does he permit some people to reject the word of his kingdom? Why does he allow the devil to tempt, deceive, and trap people? And among the answers, because the Lord has given us and everyone the gift of free will, the freedom to choose good or to choose evil, to choose to follow God and his ways, or in one way or another to choose to follow the devil and his ways. 
And because, as we proclaimed in today's gospel, God is slow to anger and abounding in kindness. And by his patience, he's teaching us that above all, he desires repentance and the gathering of all nations to worship him and glorify his name both here and and hereafter. God is just, Jesus assures us. Evildoers and those who cause others to sin will ultimately be thrown, if they're not repentant, into the fiery furnace, into hell, where the devil resides at the end of the age. In the meantime, the Lord makes his sun rise on the good and the bad, as we hear in Matthew's Gospel, his reign to fall on the just and the unjust alike. But the harvest does draw near. So let's pray and work to make moment-by-moment decisions to live out our life actively in Christ and in his church so that we might be numbered among the righteous children of God who will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Let us invite many others to join us along the way. Please stand now as we pray. Pray to the merciful Father who offers his kingdom of love to to all people. For the church, seedbed and ground for God's harvest and kingdom, for the vitality of the Christian faith throughout this pandemic and always, we pray to the Lord. For nations affected by poverty, civil unrest, and the rapid spread of COVID-19, and for perseverance and trust in God's power in the face of persecution and injustice, we pray to the Lord. For those who've lost their jobs and benefits and seek employment, for suitable weather and sufficient rain for a bountiful harvest, for the isolated sick and homebound, the aged and infirm as well, we pray to the Lord for the spiritual and physical well-being of parishioners and all who join us for Mass via YouTube, for those who have died recently, including Byron Freestone, for all who mourn, we pray to the Lord. For the particular intention of this Mass, the eternal happiness of Patrick and Teresa Kehoe, we pray to the Lord. Let's adjust our personal intentions, our needs to the Lord now. And we always turn to you, O patient and forbearing God, Heavenly Father. We pray that you may produce in us and in those we represent a rich harvest from the seed you have sown and tended through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's unite ourselves and and offer our very lives, the efforts we do to do good for others, everything now with Jesus to the Father. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion 
varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins, and by rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we proclaim the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Prayer, third Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So offer one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and open your hearts and and trust your loved ones, both living and deceased, to the Lord. And may that peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. We call upon the holy angels. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's entrust ourselves, our families, parish, church, and world to Jesus through, through Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Before you do that, and before you receive communion, please be seated. So you remind those who are yet not yet able to come to Mass that... Uh, you can check our parish website, stjohnperthontario.com, and they'll find the YouTube channel there. They'll also find the COVID connection, uh, which has all of our flock notes, which are very uh, helpful, very colorful. Number 26 is, uh, was sent out last evening to about 700, 700 families. The baskets are in either side of the exit, and uh, you can also find online information about donating uh, through pre-authorized debits or e-transfers. There aren't any bulletins these days, days because of the COVID situation. Mass intentions are listed on the, on the website as well as on the doors of the, of the church. Now for communion, for those who are, are visitors, there will be three of us in the narthex near the exits uh, at the back. For Holy Communion, those who are at the back would uh, be invited to uh, Come first, and then the rest of you can go row by row as you see fit. I'll be at the left of center. I'll be giving communion also to those who wish to receive on the tongue, and that would be after, if you can come after everybody else has received in the, in the hand. And also those helping with the sanitizing after Mass, if you can wait to the, to the end to receive communion as, uh, as well. So you keep your... Uh, Keep your distance, as they say, the two meters distancing as you approach us. There's also uh, there are hand sanitizers if you, if you wish. We'd ask you to exit uh, immediately after receiving communion. The beautiful grotto and lawn is very accessible here for you to make your Thanksgiving, uh, Thanksgiving there, or in your vehicle as you as you make your way home. And we'll we'll all keep up the prayer for for a bountiful rainfall, which is so, uh, so necessary.